Ladies and gentlemen, you know me as always, your DCW commentator, Antoine Princeton. However, before this broadcast kicks off, I have an important message to deliver from the DZW Board of Directors. And I quote, This announcement is in regards to Danger Zone Wrestling's next mega event. In the spirit of the interpromotional extravaganza called All-Stars, DZW would like to showcase the All-Stars on its roster as an extension of not only the DZW brand, but call All-Stars as well. Which is why DZW's next mega event will be DZW Call All-Stars. In two weeks, you will see some of the best talent that DZW has to offer to the Call Wrestling world. As most of you know, AJ Young recently retained the Call All-Stars Championship against the Alex Enterprise at Call All-Stars Final Four. Due to this win, AJ Young will be representing DZW at Call All-Stars for the fourth time in the main event and the fifth time overall. However, that will not be the only involvement AJ Young has at anything called Call All-Stars. Because AJ Young has decided to invoke his rematch clause for the DZW Championship at DZW Call All-Stars. Because of the personal nature of the rivalry between the challenger AJ Young and the champion Travis Killings, a regular wrestling match is of no interest to either man, which is why the third battle between AJ Young and Travis Killings will be no disqualification, no countouts, anything goes. The only rule in this match is that there will be no outside interference allowed on either man's behalf and anyone who interferes in that championship match will be suspended on the spot. Because of the importance of this rivalry, the show's full name will be DZW Call All-Stars Killings Young 3. The caveat for this match being no disqualification at both men's request, neither man will be allowed a rematch regardless of result for the foreseeable future. Speaking of the DZW Championship, a new number one contender must be named. Three men have impressed management as of late and they will be rewarded with a contendership opportunity. These three men are Kenshin Takayashi, the DZW Heritage Champion Alex Orion, and the problem, Kobe Vincent. These men will battle in a triple threat match to determine the new number one contender for the DZW Championship at Call All-Stars. The Heritage Championship will not be on the line. Race to the top will take place at DZW Call All-Stars. Six prospects will battle in a ladder match for a DZW contract and a shot at the Heritage Championship. Kevin Wonderman is currently the only man confirmed, but we're going to officially announce the remaining participants. El Dorado Championship Wrestling's Walter Scott. COH's Jeffrey Albritton. AWF's. El Martino, a new prospect by the name of Lights Out LaMarcus Odom, and the multi-league up-and-comer Ben Hopkins. The final confirmed match to take place at Call All-Stars will be the fixer Ryan Carroll battling the undefeated Wrecking Machine Bison. We are aware that there are many questions regarding Mr. Carroll's sudden return. We are currently investigating the circumstances of his return, but Bison has personally requested a match against Ryan Carroll at Call Stars, and his request was granted. Because of the injuries Bison sustained last week, he will not be cleared for competition until then. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, I am Antoine Princeton, and I welcome you to DZW Attitude. Fresh as the whip, I came in rock, rock, rock. And if you really want to rock tonight, rock, 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 rock. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to DZW Attitude. I am your commentator, as always, Antoine Princeton. And it looks like tonight we're going to get things kicked off with Caleb Blair. Caleb Blair lately not making any friends 
in Danger Zone Wrestling. Certainly not with Lance Alistair and Adonis Sterling. The last time we saw Caleb Blair, he picked up a hard-fought victory against Adonis Sterling. And Lance Alistair did everything he could to stack the deck against Caleb Blair. He interfered in the match repeated numerous times. But the referee ended up tossing Lance Alistair out. And with Alistair out of the way, Caleb Blair was able to pick up the victory against Adonis Sterling. Lance Alistair can't be happy about that. But knowing Caleb Blair, I don't think he cares. But Caleb Blair is not scheduled to compete tonight. So what is his purpose out here? Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to find out shortly. So yeah, according to the script that I was looking at before I came out here, I'm not supposed to have a match. Hell, I'm not even supposed to be out here in this ring right now. You guys are supposed to be doing your little pageantries and pleasantries. Someone's supposed to be coming out here. Another dumbass is supposed to be coming out here. They're going to put on a boring little three-minute match because that's how they open the curtain jerker. More like curtain jerk off if you get my drift. Ba boom tis. Oh no, instead I'm going to spice things up, I'm going to make things a little bit more interesting, because this is DZW, right? Yeah, I think I'm in the right place, so why not make it a little interesting? I'm out here for a good, good reason. You know, last time I was out here, I had took care of uh, oversized Donald Sterling, and I, and I you know, I, I spanked his ass up and down, and then, then that little, that little twig, I was standing out there. You know, the one that I snapped at uh, Pandemonium? Uh, Lance Alistair? Lance, Lance Bastard? Whatever the fuck his name is, you know? He just had to keep on getting his nose where it didn't belong. You know? You know I, I'm not one for people who eat the booty like the groceries, you know? So, I didn't appreciate that. So, what I'm gonna do is there's a little thing coming up called Call All Stars. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm bringing that up. You know, it's around that time of the year. It's the most wonderful time of the year, actually. <laughs> there's something that DZW is doing for Call All Stars. And I wouldn't, I just can't think of a better place than to humiliate you there again. You know, you can walk around with your little, with your little rock and roll theme music talking about how you were undefeated for so long, well, that's that's all gonna change. I'm gonna knock your ass out. I'm gonna take your little oversized Jeff Jarrett looking boy toy there. He's gonna go down with you. And then, I'm gonna turn DZW. It's my own little playground. <laughs> and not any of you are gonna do anything about it. And then that DZW championship? <laughs> oh. I'm going to do some terrible, terrible things to it. <laughs> Lance Alcer not taking kindly to Caleb Blair's words, wasting no time making his way to the ring. Caleb Blair, as I said earlier, not worried about making friends, not worried about what's politically correct. He's worried about one thing and one thing only, and that's Caleb Blair. Conspicuous by his absence is Lance Alistair's muscle, his bodyguard, Adonis Sterling, the man Caleb Blair beat on Attitude 21. But the one is feeling the confidence to go this alone tonight. But will he accept Caleb Blair's challenge for Call All Stars?
Caleb Blair, it sickens me to my stomach to see that someone actually let you in to my show, my company. But you know what, Caleb? You can keep on with your insults. You can keep on with the verbal jabs because we all know that you're all talk. At Pandemonium, you caught me off guard. And two weeks ago, you got lucky against Adonis Sterling. But trust me, Caleb Blair, that is the last time you will ever get lucky again. But let me cut to the chase. You do very good on the microphone. You do very good attacking people when they don't expect it. But when you get into this ring with me, I'm going to be the one embarrassing you. As far as call stars, I accept. Hey, hold on just a minute. Lance Elser accepted Caleb Blair's challenge for Call All Stars. But Lance Elser rushing right after Caleb Blair. Oh, Caleb Blair with a low blow. Caleb Blair catching up her hand on Lance Elser, not afraid to get his hands dirty. But Elser has had enough of the embarrassment. Elser has had enough of the games. And now he's searching under the ring, and Elser has a steel chair. Caleb Blair knocking the chair out of Alistair's hand. And now Caleb Blair trying to go under the ring. But now Alistair stopping Blair dead in his tracks. And he has a steel chair in hand. Oh my goodness! Lance Alistair seeing the opportunity. And now he's the one embarrassing Caleb Blair as he's striking him over and over again with that steel chair. The frustration boiling over for Alistair, but this may be too much. And Alistair's relentless with that steel chair. And now Blair back into the ring. I can understand Alistair's frustration, but this might be a little too much. And Alistair has Blair a brain buster. Brain buster to Caleb Blair. And Alistair does not look like he's done. Oh, he's going for it. Flip pile driver. Caleb Blair was the one who issued the challenge to Lance Alistair. But right now, it's looking like it's Blair that's regretting it. Lance Alistair was embarrassed two weeks in a row by Caleb Blair. And he was certain to make sure that it did not happen a third time. But ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a quick commercial break. We will be right back with more DZW Attitude.
is Video Game Wrestling Network, the only network for... It is free. Austin, I'm not a hard oh my God! Why is the Video Game Wrestling Network the only network for... Started off and... Oh! Out of nowhere! Don't fall on the steel. Oh my God! Oh! Superplex! What a brutal match. We have just seen it. Why is Video Game Wrestling Network the only network for... Daniel Bars. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! BSKO! There it is! King Target! Oh! He goes over the top! Spider-Man! Why? This is the only place we want to be. Video Game Wrestling Network, the only network for you. Experience the best in CAW Wrestling. Only on Video Game Wrestling Network. Welcome back to DZW Attitude, and as I always say, when this man comes out, ladies and gentlemen, we have a problem. During the break, Caleb Blair was held to the back by DZW staff and officials. No word on his condition at the moment, but to the task at hand, Kobe Vincent, the problem, making his way to the ring. And last week, we got caught by surprise after Sean Walsh and Steven Tintax lost the DZW Tag Team titles to Jay Kite and Michael Stone. Kobe Vincent came out and decimated the former Tag Team Champions for no apparent reason. And the show ended with a stare down between Kobe Vincent and AJ Young. Neither man looked happy, but tonight Kobe Vincent has to put all that aside and focus on taking on Brad Carisco. Kobe Vincent came out victorious against one half of the Fight Hard Syndicate, Liam North. But can he do the same this week against Brad Carisco? Not to take anything away from Liam North, he hit Kobe Vincent with everything that he could, but at the end of the day, the problem was too much for Liam North. But will he prove too much? for Brad Carisco tonight as well. This man is the face of intimidation, the face of violence. And it does not seem like his path of destruction is going to end anytime soon. But Brad Carisco can be the man that puts that to a stop here tonight. But going one-on-one -on -one with the problem is easier said than done. And here he comes, the former two-time knockout promotions middleweight champion, Brad Carisco. And Brad Carisco brings something to the table that no other competitor has brought to Kobe Vincent yet, and that is significant punching power. Brad Carisco's key to success in this match, hit hard, hit harder, hit his hardest, because he's going to need every punch in the book to beat Kobe Vincent. The all started between the two men last week. After Kobe Vincent beat Liam North, Brad Carisco went face to face with Kobe Vincent. And Brad Carisco deserves credit. He stood his ground and the problem left the ring. But will he be able to stand his ground here tonight? <laughs> Referee rings a bell. And our first contest of the night is underway. Now Kobe Vincent, this is the intimidation fact I was talking about. And Brad Carisco, close lighting the problem out of the ring. Brad Carisco not backing down from Kobe Vincent. I think that caught Kobe Vincent by surprise. And now he's going to make Brad Carisco pay. Brad Carisco, missing with a couple strikes, but hitting a couple more to make up for it. And going for the pin on the problem, and Kobe Vincent kicks out before the count of one.
Brad Carisco adopting this punching strategy early. But Kobe Vincent has taken these like a champ so far. But Kobe Vincent's on the ropes. And now Brad Carisco launching Kobe Vincent onto the top rope. Brad Carisco not letting Kobe Vincent stand. Not giving him an inch of breathing room. And that's probably the smartest strategy that Brett Carisco can adopt. Don't let up. Keep on Kobe Vincent as much as possible. As you see, with every strike, Brad Carisco is just getting closer and closer. And now Kobe Vincent fighting back. Oh no, this could be bad for Brad Carisco. And Kobe Vincent with that tilt to world power slam. And that's the thing about Kobe Vincent. One move can change the course of a match. Brad Carisco had the advantage early on, but Kobe Vincent is making him pay for it. Making him pay for all those strikes. Now, Kobe Vincent has Brad Carisco on the ropes. Kobe Vincent has Brad Carisco on the top rope. And oh my goodness, Kobe Vincent kneeing Brad Carisco in the ribs. And fall away, slam a follow up, and that gets more painful every time I watch it. And Kobe Vincent is gonna deadlift Brad Carisco with the power bomb. Go for the cover on KO. And Brad Carisco kicks out at two. And now Brad Carisco crawling to his feet, or at least trying to. And Kobe Vincent, another power bomb. That second one may have done it. Going for the win, two. And Brad Carisco out the count of two. But Kobe Vincent was smart to use those vicious knees to the body that we saw earlier. Brad Carisco is a deadly striker, and we saw that firsthand. But Kobe Vincent, if he takes the air out of Brad Carisco's lungs, those punches become far and fewer between and less effective. Brad Carisco dominated the early part of this match. And Kobe Vincent on the second rope, and oh my goodness. Body splash from Kobe Vincent. Will that do it? Two, and this match is up. Wait, no! This match isn't over. The referee's hand came down for the three, but Brad Carisco kicked out right before that. And Brad Carisco fighting with everything that he has. And Brad Carisco now is a 300 pounder. Helpless. And there's a backbreaker. And Brad Carisco cutting off the rest of the ring. Not giving Kobe Vincent any space. And there's an uppercut. The result of this match depends on how many more strikes from Brad Carisco that Kobe Vincent can take. And Brad Carisco, what the hell? The strength that Brad Carisco had to hit Kobe Vincent with that mid-air European uppercut. Is this match over? And no! Brad Carisco is in disbelief. I thought the match was over right there. The strength that it took for Brad Carisco to launch a 300 pound man in the air. But now Kobe Vincent is pissed. And he's gonna hit Brad Carisco with the pop up power bomb. Going for the cover. That's it. That's over. And Brad Carisco got the shoulder up. Brad Carisco is used to getting knocked down and getting back up. But he is not used to facing a man like Kobe Vincent. And there's another power bomb. Kobe Vincent is going to powerbomb Brad Carisco over and over if that's what it takes to win this match. Brad Carisco in the corner. Now Kobe Vincent putting him on the top turnbuckle. Brad Carisco in the danger zone. But Brad Carisco is going to fly. European uppercut. And will that uppercut put Kobe Vincent away? And no! The frustration evident on the face of Brad Carisco. Ladies and gentlemen, we're getting a main event caliber match to kick off the action on DZW Attitude. 
Brad Carisco with the uppercuts. Kobe Vincent with the power bombs. And Brad Carisco with the stiff boot to the face of the problem. Brad Carisco is going to hit Kobe Vincent as hard as physically possible. If it means winning this match. Oh, speaking of hitting hard, Brad Carisco's winding up. And Kobe Vincent blocks it. And now Kobe Vincent with the flying clothesline. And that block death punch may have been the opening. Kobe Vincent needs to put this match away. Problem solver. Go for the cover. One, two, three. Brad Carisco put up one hell of a fight. And it looked like for a few moments there that he was going to be the one to beat the problem. But Kobe Vincent proving too much yet again. All it takes is one big move for Kobe Vincent to change the course of a match. And we saw that firsthand here tonight. And here comes trouble. Last week we were wondering what the status was of the relationship between AJ Young and Kobe Vincent. But it looks like we're about to get our answer here tonight because here comes AJ Young. The two-time Call All-Star Champion. The man who will be getting his championship rematch against Travis Killings at DZW Call All-Stars. And he is heading to the ring to confront the problem, Kobe Vincent. The fact that AJ Young is coming to the ring to confront Kobe Vincent without an army. I don't know if that's confidence or stupidity on the part of AJ Young. Seeing as how a wrestling ring is the only place where I can get a hold of you, now is as good a time as any for me to say what I have to say. I don't know what's been going on lately. You haven't been returning my calls, my text messages, nothing. You showed up last week and you assaulted your supremacy brothers? And by the way, if there's any idiots on the internet who think that I have anything to do with that attack, you're wrong. Kobe Vincent acted on his own against his brothers. But I'm going to make this right. You see, Shaw Walsh and Steven Syntax, they're itching to get a piece of you. But guess what? I told them to take the week off, calm down, recuperate from the beating that you gave them unprovoked. And I told them that I would make this right. The only reason you are not a dead man right now is because of me. But I don't even know why you're acting out. Oh, oh, oh. Is it because of what I did to Eddie? Look, Eddie Roy was a weak link and he had to be removed. In order for the supremacy to truly be, I don't know, supreme, we can't afford to have weak links in the group. Sean Walsh is a proven veteran. Steven Syntax is a former DIW champion and current AWF King of the Ring. You have not been pinned or submitted since you stepped foot in DZW and I am a former and soon to be first ever two-time DZW champion and I am the first ever two-time Call All-Stars champion in history. We all brought something to the table. What did Eddie Roy bring? Losses? The reason Travis Killings is the DZW champion right now is because you and Eddie did not get the job done at Undeniable. It was a freaking handicap match. 
The ball was in your court and the both of you blew it. But guess who took the pin in that match? Eddie Roy. Who failed to win the No Limits Championship and bring some gold back to the supremacy? Eddie Roy. And who has been a colossal failure since joining the supremacy? Eddie Roy. For that, he had to be removed. I didn't ask for your opinion or give you advance warning simply because it was an executive decision. Nothing personal, just business. But it will become personal very soon because I need to know tonight what side you're on. AJ Young not playing any games when it comes to Kobe Vincent. He needs to know what side Kobe Vincent is on tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Heated confrontation between Kobe Vincent and AJ Young before the break. AJ Young basically giving Kobe Vincent an ultimatum. He needs to find out what side he's on tonight. Keep in mind, AJ Young is in our main event in a tag team match with Alex Orion against Kenshin Takayashi and the DZW champion, Travis Killings. But that's later. Right now, the fixer, Ryan Carroll, is making his way to the ring for his in-ring return. Ryan Carroll coming out to no music, just walking out to the sound of booze. Ryan Carroll may be walking around with a giant target on his back. He went after Bison of all people when he made his return last week. And although Bison isn't here tonight, he will be facing Ryan Carroll at DZW Call All Stars. And I don't know what type of chaos these men are going to cause when they go one on one. But for right now, Ryan Carroll is in action. Here we go, Ryan Carroll from the bell with a wicked clothesline. Ryan Carroll on the offensive from the jump. There's a foot right to the face of Blue Stevens. And Ryan Carroll with these repeated forearm strikes. Just not letting up whatsoever. And I think Blue Seasons might have been off a little more than he could chew here tonight. And Carroll with a butterfly backbreaker. And the fixer sending Blue Stevens right into the corner with authority. Ryan Carroll just looking for someone to take his frustrations out on. Came back with a new look. Came back with a bang. But as I said, giant target on his back for when Bison makes his return. But the question is, what shape is Bison going to be in? He's not even clear for competition until Call All-Stars. But oh, Blue Stevens getting some offense against Ryan Carroll. And Blue Stevens with some right hands. But Ryan Carroll with a neck breaker. Ryan Carroll with the flapjack. The fixer just having his way with Blue Stevens. And oh, I don't like the look of this. Ryan Carroll has him set up for a discus big boot. Nearly kicking Blue Stevens' head off. And Ryan Carroll is examining his damage. Now Blue Stevens slowly making his way to his feet. 
But he's gonna go right back down with the shovel. Thanks for coming, Blue Stevens. Ryan Carroll with an impressive return here tonight. Blue Stevens got a little bit of offense in, but Ryan Carroll grew to be too much. That big one nearly decapitating Blue Stevens changed the game for everybody, ladies and gentlemen. Ryan Carroll is back. We don't know why, and we need answers. But ladies and gentlemen, up next, no limits action between Scrap Boogie, Jason Cross of the Young Bloods, and Paradox. Here comes Paradox, a man who last time we saw him was in a triple threat match for the No Limits Championship at Pandemonium against Drew Cutler and Double X. It was an elimination match that saw Paradox do literally all of the dirty work to eliminate Double X. And after that, Drew Cutler took advantage. And while it was back and forth for a while, Drew Cutler ended up proving too much for Paradox. But uh, winning this match here tonight against two skilled No Limits competitors is just what Paradox could use to propel himself back into the No Limits Championship scene. On the other hand, a win here tonight for Jason Cross could be a momentum booster to get his first ECW No Limits Championship match. Jason Cross best known for teaming with Adrian Dawkins as the Young Bloods, a promising young tag team, no pun intended. But both men have dabbled in singles action in the past. And here tonight, Jason Cross is looking to beat Paradox and Scrap Boogie to ascend the singles ranks. Not only in the No Limits division, but in DZW in general. And quite frankly, I believe this man has the talent to pull it off. But here comes the most colorful personality in this match, the party animal, Scrat Boogie. The pizza loving party king making his way to the ring. And Scrat Boogie, to my recollection, since debuting DZW, has yet to lose a match. And in fact, he teamed with Paradox in the past to take on Double X and Drew Cutler, which was a winning effort. But nonetheless, Scrap Boogie and Paradox do have some experience with each other. So are they gonna use that to their advantage here tonight to pick up the victory? Scrap Boogie all about having fun, all about having parties. And I can't imagine the party that he's gonna throw if he can get himself a shot at the No Limits Championship. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our exciting, high-flying, no limits division, three-way action. Referee rings the bell. Jason Cross going right at the scrap bookie from the get-go. There's a T-bone suplex. And Jason Cross has Paradox, setting him into the corner. And Paradox with the jawbreaker to Jason Cross. But now Scrap Boogie with the neck breaker. All three men getting in some offense early. All depends on which man can get the advantage. Taking on two people is better said than done. But now Scrap Boogie going for the pain. Paradox taking out immediately. And out goes Scrap Boogie and Jason Cross goes with them. Paradox jumping out with them as well. I don't know if that was smart. Paradox should stay in the ring. But Jason Cross and Scrap Boogie tire themselves out on the outside. But actually, I think that's what... No, I was about to say that's what Paradox is doing, but... Paradox getting himself some action against Jason Cross, throwing him right into the barricade. Oh, but Jason Cross making a pay. And Scrap Boogie! Suicide dive through the ropes. 
Ladies and gentlemen, this action may be difficult to call. And scrap Boogie with a springboard drop kick. And now Paradox has Scrap Boogie in a headlock. And a press a kick to the chest. Now Scrap Boogie's fighting back. Jason Cross is letting him go at it. But now Jason Cross getting himself back into the fray. And down goes Scrap Boogie. Oh, is Jason Cross gonna do a uh, kick right to the chest? Jason Cross just wearing down Scrap Boogie, going for the pin, but Paradox is right there. Not even allowed to the count of one. And Paradox with the Hurricane Rana with Scrap Boogie. Let's think about a three-way match. You have to watch your back at all times or else your competitor can take advantage or opponent, should I say. Paradox and Scrap Boogie bumping into each other. And now all three men are just teeing off on each other. But Paradox, Sunset Flip. We've seen that move in the past. It's won Paradox his fair share of matches. But Jason Cross trying to take advantage. Paradox breaking that up immediately. Scrap Boogie taking damage from both men. But Paradox go for the cover. And Scrap Boogie out. Right at the count of two. Jason Cross could have lost himself the match by taking too long to go to the top rope. But luckily, Scrap Boogie was able to kick out. Now, oh, what is Paradox going for? Paradox Hurricane Rana. And now the competitor's attention is turned to Jason Cross. Scrap Boogie clotheslining Paradox right out of the ring. Take Paradox out of the equation, and you have a 50% chance of winning this matchup. And Scrap Boogie, oh my goodness, what a maneuver. And now Scrap Boogie with a float over DDT to Paradox. Scrap Boogie has some momentum going, and that's a knee right to the face. But Paradox knocking Scrap Boogie down, killing his momentum dead. Paradox going for the pin on Scrap Boogie. But Jason Cross there to break it up. He's up. This is just a taste of what the No Limits division is all about. Now Jason Cross and Scrap Boogie goes to the top rope. Jason Cross with the 450 splash, turning in midair. But Scrap Boogie missing the frog splash. But that 450 from Jason Cross, impressive. Rotating in midair to make sure he caught all the paradox. Scrap Boogie with the clothesline to Jason Cross. The paradox with the kick to the back this time. Now paradox looking to take advantage. Go for the pin. One, two. A Jason Cross had to break it up. Why these men decide to go for the pinfall with another man in the ring? I don't know. I, I'm not a wrestler. I'm just a commentator. But I, I can talk about a little strategy every now and again. All right. Scrap Boogie with the Northern Light Suplex. Missing Paradox. Now Paradox with the Iris Whip. And now he has Scrap Boogie on the top rope. And this could end badly for Scrap Boogie. He's in the danger zone. And oh my goodness, Moonsault Side Slam. Paradox going for the pin on Scrap Boogie, forgetting Jason Cross is right behind him. As far as Scrap Boogie, the damage may have already been done, but Scrap Boogie making his way to his feet. And now, again going for the pin with another man in the ring. Again, I'm not a wrestler. I'm just a strategist and a commentator. And wait, Paradox! Oh my goodness! Paradox with the springboard move, taking out both men. Now, ladies and gentlemen, no replay could do that justice. 
These men are putting their bodies on the line to ascend the ranks in the No Limits division. That was Greg Bookie going up to the top rope. Paradox trying to meet him right in the ring. It is a knee. Knocking Scrap Boogie off the top rope. And Jason Cross going for the pin yet again. But Paradox with another impressive arc and Rana. One, two, and then maybe no. Scrap Boogie would have been a second too late to stop the pinfall, but luckily Jason Cross kicked out. And out goes Jason Cross. Now it's Paradox and Scrap Boogie to battle it out. Can one of these men take advantage? Now that Jason Cross is out of the way for the time being. But now Scrap Boogie with the forearm. Another forearm. Paradox goes to the clothesline. And there's a spine buster. And Scrap Boogie is feeling it here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. And Jason Cross going right back out. Scrap Boogie's riding a huge wave of momentum right now. And Scrap Boogie, leg to the back of the head of Paradox. Scrap Boogie's done a lot of springboarding here tonight. Is it going to be any different here? No, he's going to the top rope. But Jason Cross is back in. Oh, wait. Paradox. What an impressive maneuver. I don't even know what to call that, but oh my goodness. Scrap Boogie with the frog splash of Jason Cross and taking out Paradox all the way down. Ladies and gentlemen, what a no limit match we have here tonight. Jason Cross slowly making his way to his feet after that big frog splash. Oh my goodness, Jason Cross getting a knee to the face. And I think he's busted open. Jason Cross may be down for the count. Jason Cross trying to get his senses together. As Paradox has Scrap Boogie in the corner. Our Paradox, what's he gonna do? Scrap Boogie does an alley -oop bomb. And Jason Cross walking towards Paradox, but Paradox stopping him getting his track. And what's Paradox gonna do? Sunset Flip Power Bomb. Scrap Boogie needs to make his way to his feet, but Paradox! Paradox has won this match. What a match. All three men gave it their all. But Paradox came away with the victory. Grand Boogie was incapacitated for just a moment. But it was a moment too long as Paradox was able to get the win by pinning Jason Cross. And now Paradox exiting the ring and celebrating with fans. Uh-oh. We were talking about the No Limits Division, but here comes this champion, dignified Drew Cutler. Champion confidently walking down to the ring as always. After having just witnessed an impressive three-way match, what does Drew Cutler have to say to the crowd here tonight? Drew Cutler has thus far turned back every challenge for the No Limits Championship through dubious means or otherwise. Most recently successfully defending the championship against Eddie Roy on Attitude 21, and we all know what the aftermath of that was. The savage beating that AJ Young gave to Eddie Roy. But back to the subject at hand, Drew Cutler about to enter the ring to address the DZW audience. DZW, this is your dignified one and your reigning defendant and only No Limits champion, dignified Drew Cutler. And it's been a while since you've heard from me. I've been sitting here admiring my DZW empire, the empire that I've created in this No Limits division because not one person has been able to step up and defeat me. 
And when I take a look at this division, even now, even with me not speaking to you in quite a long time, I see nothing but waste, nothing but useless trash that isn't even fit to carry my bags, lace up my boots, let alone put my damn boots on. It's pathetic. I mean, you just take a look at the No Limits division. I've beaten almost everyone in it. There's nothing that stands out to me. You got that Jake Hyde guy that I've beaten a bajillion times, and then there's other... I, I don't even... Is he even in the company anymore? That, no, I, I think I got rid of him, that double X guy, whoever the fuck that was. Jesus Christ. I take a look at this roster, and it's just filled with wastes of space. There's nothing... No one can beat me. Jesus, I think I'm going to have to buy a, an opponent. It's it's getting ridiculous, DZW. The fact that I, your man, Drew Cutler, the man that has represented your company in Call Stars and has brought you a bunch of revenue. I am your top draw. I am your top guy. I am the main event. The Dark Lord of the Scent, the Dignified One, Drew Cutler, no one can beat me, and if they do, well, I'll just uh, give them a little uh, a little something something in the form of cash, and they'll uh, just be uh, minding their own business for the time being. DZW, you're not giving me comp the competition I want, the competition I need, because what kind of champion doesn't have challengers? And I'm the only person that can represent your company into the, the new era, the new beginnings of DZW for, to infinity and beyond. I mean, you look at me. I was in the Kingdom of Ka tournament. I almost won the damn thing, even if I didn't make it to the finals. Who the fuck cares? I was in it. And that's all that matters because no one else from this company is good enough to be in a tournament like that and represent it in such a prestigious level. No one even compares to Drew Cutler, and the fact that I am not getting the competition I need is making me sick. So, DZW, since your No Limits division has proven that they have about as much talent as a, a rock in the middle of a street being kicked into a lake, it's just, it's, there's no talent in this division, and it's driving me nuts. So... What I'm offering you, management, because you won't give me the competition, I'm going to give myself the competition. I'm going to bring it here to DZW. So, at DZW Call All Stars, I am issuing an open challenge to anyone who wants to get in the ring with the Dignified One. Now, let me be perfectly clear before you get all excited. I'm going to beat the champion. No, 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 no. It's not that easy. Everything comes with a price. And it's going to be a non-title match. Non-title. Because, let's be honest here, even if you did give me competition, it's not like they would be good enough to beat me for the belt or anything. So at all, Call All Stars, DZW Call All Stars, I want competition, and I'm going to get it. So... To anyone in that DZW roster, maybe even someone that's a free agent that's not in DZW. You want the Dignified One, the Dark Lord of the Scent in this ring. You want to potentially become champion. You want to be in the presence of a god. DZW Call All Stars, I'm issuing my challenge now. Management, anyone. Give me someone. Make a name for yourself. And prove that you can hang with the Dignified One. But you won't, because no one's as good as me. But at Call All-Stars, the EZW Call All-Stars, I want my competition. And God damn it, I'm going to get it. You have just witnessed the personification of greatness. This is your Dignified One. You're No Limits Champion. I'll catch you later.
all wrestling was fun. People try and make this place not fun anymore. The trolls. I was told to just ignore them. But I do not stand down. I do not quit. I fight. And I defeated the trolls. I win. They lose. So, the burning question. Will Sean Walsh host Call All Stars 8 this summer on YouTube? I'm officially confirming that I will be the host of Call All Stars 8. Call All Stars 8 needs a host who is here from day one. He's a host that wins. Sick and tired of losing. But most importantly, Call All Stars needs a host who knows how to have fun. The Call Dream dead, but I will bring it back bigger, better, and stronger than ever, and we will make call fun again. Well, ladies and gentlemen, what arrogance on the part of Drew Cutler to basically disregard the exciting No Limits action that we just saw before the commercial break. But the big story here is Drew Cutler is issuing an open challenge for anyone to face him at DCW Call All-Stars in a non-title match. It could be anybody on the roster. It could be any free agent. But my question is, is Drew Cutler digging himself into a hole? I mean, literally anybody can accept that open challenge. Or is Drew Cutler confident enough that he could beat anybody on the roster or anybody in call wrestling? I mean, he does have a point. He did make it to the Sweet 16 of the 64-man Kingdom of Call Tournament. But ladies and gentlemen, on to the next subject. The Sandman himself, Ryan Moxley, just casually sitting in his chair. But there is nothing casual about what he's about to go up against. Brian Moxley's gonna be in a handicap match against Paige and Kennedy. But Brian Moxley seems not to care about having a man disadvantage. Brian Moxley did beat Colin Kennedy last week in impressive fashion, and we still have yet to hear about Devin Storm, which leads one to wonder, has the Sandman rid DCW of Devin Storm for good? And now Paige and Kennedy making their way to the ring. Chris Page, as you see, his ribs are taped up due to the beating that he took from AJ Young on Attitude 21. Chris Page got basically no offense in that match and it ended painfully for Southern Justice as AJ Young 450 splashed Chris Page through the table. So, I mean, obviously Chris Page seems in decent enough shape to compete tonight. But will his partner, Colin Kennedy, have to take the bulk of the workload in this handicap match? Before that bell even rings, I want to say something. You see, lately I've been away after decimating and destroying and putting a permanent end to the storm. I cleared things up. The clouds have left and the storm is no more. But the Sandman is ready to put more to sleep. 
but for an eternal rest that they don't wake up from, that they don't get another chance from. I look over here and I look at you, Paige and Kennedy. I look at how your tag teaming has been on the hard times and neither of you can even grasp at a singles win. Let alone a tag win as well. The glorified nothings in this world that need to be put down. But the Sandman can put you down, but I can also awaken what's deep inside each of you. So instead of us fighting here tonight, I will offer you to join me. Follow me into dreamland and be awoken as new leaders of my army. Let the hourglass tip and your resurgence can begin. I know Chris Bates and Colin Kennedy have been pouring their luck as of late, but I hope, I sincerely hope they do not accept Brian Moxley's offer. They haven't moved a muscle yet. But, oh, come on. Don't tell me. Don't tell me that they're actually going to follow this man. No. Don't tell me that they're going to be students of this lunatic. You gotta be kidding! No, as they kneel before Brian Moxley, I, I can't believe what I'm seeing, ladies and gentlemen. They're following him up the ramp, and now Brian Moxley has followers. He may just be more dangerous than ever before. I'll speak to ladies and gentlemen. Nonetheless, our main event is tag team action. And here comes the champ. Earlier tonight, it was revealed that Travis Skellings will defend the DZW Championship against AJ Young at Call Stars Killings Young 3. But this time, it's unlike any other encounter between AJ Young and Travis Killings. No disqualification, no count out. These men are going to be allowed to do whatever they have to do to win the match. But the disadvantage that Travis Killings has in that match, not only is Asia Young driving no rules environments, but Travis Killings is giving up his right to a rematch clause should he lose the DCW Championship at Call All Stars. I don't know how smart that decision was, but it shows how bad Travis Killings wants to get his hands on AJ Young. And we're gonna get a small preview of that match here tonight. And one has to wonder what condition Travis Killings is in tonight. Last time we saw Travis Killings, he was the third and final victim of AJ Young's rampage two weeks ago. And this dude has gotten personal for both men, and I cannot wait to see them finally sell it all at Call Stars. And here comes Travis Killings' partner, Kenshin Takayashi. Genshin Takayashi doing battle with Travis Killings, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the champion two weeks ago and taking him to his limit. And just when it looked like Genshin Takayashi was going to put the champ away, Alex Orion came out and attacked Genshin Takayashi, causing the disqualification. And from there, all hell broke loose. But nonetheless, Travis Killings looking to get his hands on AJ Young. Genshin Takayashi looking to get his hands on the DZW Heritage Champion, Alex Orion. There's a lot of bad blood and animosity in this tag team match tonight. But we found out earlier, Kenshi Takayashi will get his hands on Alex Orion at Call All-Stars. But the wild card in that match, Kobe Vincent will be involved as well. Triple threat match to determine the number one contender for the DZW Championship. The stakes have been raised, ladies and gentlemen. And here comes the Heritage Champion, Alex Orion. Alex Orion, thus far unpinned, 
unsubmitted as the Heritage Champion. Alex Orion and Kenshin Takayashi had a classic at Pandemonium, but it was Alex Orion who walked away with the victory. And Alex Orion's motive for attacking Kenshin Takayashi and costing him a win against a DCW Champion, simple, jealousy. Alex Orion feels that he should have been the one to face Travis Killings in the main event of Attitude 21. He feels that Kenshin Takayashi simply did not deserve it because Alex Orion already beat Kenshin Takayashi. But both men will be getting their opportunity to challenge for the DCW Championship if they win at Call All-Stars. But the big roadblock in both men's path is the problem, Kobe Vincent. And we just saw what Kobe Vincent did to Brad Carisco earlier tonight. And you have to think that Alex Orion and Kenshi Takayashi were watching. And that Kobe Vincent was sending a message to both men. Now here comes a challenger for the DZW Championship and the current Call All-Stars Champion, AJ Young. There he is, arguably the most despicable man on the planet. But nonetheless, he does have a chance to become the first ever two-time DZW champion at Call Stars against Travis Killings. But earlier tonight, AJ Young told Kobe Vincent that he needs some indication that the problem is still on his side. And I don't know if Kobe Vincent is going to respond. I don't know how Kobe Vincent is going to react to that. But AJ Young needs to put his worries are the problem aside for this tag team match he's going up against the dcw champion and a very skilled competitor in his own right in kenshin takayashi but aj young does have car wrestling's grand natural on his side the weird thing about this match is that aj young and travis killings can get a close look at who they might be facing for the dcw championship in the future both their partners are possible contenders for the DZW Championship. So this is a chance for all four of these competitors to study each other because they may be facing each other in the future. Looks like we're going to start this match off with the DZW Champions, the World Champion Travis Killings, the Heritage Champion Alex Orion, and here we go. Travis Killings says Orion in a headlock, Orion responding with the knee to the gut. And now Orion with some strikes to Killings. But Killings with the big forearm. Now Travis Killings has Alex Orion by the arm. There's a big sidekick. Carl Wrestling's Grand Naturals in trouble early in this match. Killings go for the pin, but Orion kicking out at one. Travis Killings would love nothing more than to get his hands on AJ Young. But if Alex Orion has anything, oh my goodness, what a knee. If Alex Orion has anything to say about it, that's not going to happen. And Alex Orion with the big forearm blow to Travis Killings. And now the Naturals going airborne. And picture perfect crossbody. Alex Orion is out blasting the DZW champion early. And now Travis Killings is in the danger zone as the tag is made to AJ Young. An impressive tag team maneuver. Backbreaker and elbow drop combination. And the champion is down. It's springboard 450. AJ Young has finished many men with that 450 in the past. Will Travis Killings be added to the list? And no. Travis Killings is nowhere near his partner. Oh, Travis Killings now battling back against AJ Young, the man he's desperately wanted to get his hands on since Attitude 21. And he is now getting his wish, and out goes AJ Young. AJ 
AJ Young, this man pissed off the wrong man. As AJ Young back first into the barricade. Is this just a taste of what we're gonna see at Call Stars? It's Travis Killings just beating the absolute hell out of AJ Young. Referee's at the count of five. Travis Killings has to put his thirst for revenge aside if he wants to win this match for his team. Now AJ Young back in the ring. Travis Killings is in at the count of eight. Now AJ Young tossing. Travis Killings over. Missing with the super kick. Oh, Travis Killings is going to make him pay for it. Spin out power bomb. And Travis Killings making the tag to the freshest participant in this match, Kenshin Takayashi. There's a knee right to the face of AJ Young. Takayashi would love nothing more than to get his hands on Alex Orion. But if AJ Young has anything to say about that, that won't happen. But it doesn't look like AJ Young's in good shape as they're being brutalized by the DCW champion. But now Takayashi going up to the top rope. Is he going for it? Air Takayashi. Air Takayashi to the Call Stars champion. Two and no. Alex Ryan desperately begging for the tag to be made. But AJ Young. All right, Alex Ryan might get his wish. It's Takayashi completely in the danger zone. And there's a tag to Alex Orion. A double super kick. Double super kick. Now the hands of Shaman go for the pin, but Travis Kelly's broke it up. Takayashi wanted nothing more than to get a piece of Alex Orion. But Takayashi doesn't seem like he's in good shape right now. Alex Orion hitting a neck breaker. And now going up. Natural going up top. And there's an elbow right to the face. Alex Orion with a few back elbows. And there's a trifecta. And Alex Orion just beating down. Kenshin Takayashi. The man that he beat at Pandemonium to retain the Heritage Championship. But Alex Orion just not doing anything too major. Just methodically mowing down Kenshin Takayashi. Oh, but we might see something major right here. And there's a back superplex. It looks like about taking a little bit out of Alex Orion as well. Genshin Takayashi has not moved as the tag is made to AJ Young. And AJ Young just slapping. Kenshin Takayashi, but Takayashi's fighting back with some slaps of his own. Missing Nazagiri and AJ Young hitting an Nazagiri of his own. Uh, AJ Young has Takayashi up, and there's a knee right to the head. And going for the pin on Takayashi, and Travis Kelly's is in to break it up. Al Ryan was a tad bit too late to stop the breakup attempt. But Takayashi is still in trouble. Oh, we've seen this before from AJ Young. It's ended plenty of matches in the past. But AJ Young going for the top rope brain buster. Brain buster to Takayashi. Takayashi is motionless. 
And AJ Young with the moonsault. Picture perfect. And now AJ Young go for the pin on Takayashi. And Takayashi out at the count of two. Altarine was able to stop the breakup attempt there. But Takayashi kicked out anyway. But he might not kick out of this. Young staring DDT. Oh, but Takayashi still showing he has a little bit of fight left in him. But he desperately needs to make the tag to Travis Killings. And Takayashi with a jumping leg lariat. Takayashi may have changed the game in this match. And here comes the DZW champion. And back to where it all started. These men have been at each other's throats for the longest time. And then now they're just striking each other back and forth. I'm beginning to think there's not going to be any conclusion to this rivalry. These men were just destined to fight forever. But AJ on getting the upper hand in the striking exchange. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, what a move. DDT. Travis Killings using his legs. Travis Killings responding with an SEO. Travis Killings smashing AJ Young's head against the mat. Now Travis sending his challenger to B against the ropes. And there's a spine buster. Spine buster from the champion. You know, just about to say AJ Young may be in danger. But AJ Young responding with a belly to belly suplex. AJ Young going back to the top rope. And another moonsault. Again, picture perfect. And speaking of picture perfect, what a super kick. AJ on going to the second rope. Swanton bomb. AJ Young has the advantage for his team, but I guess I spoke too soon. Oh, Travis Killings has him up. TKO! TKO from Travis Killings. Go for the pin. Alex Orion sensing danger and breaking it up. And Alex Orion with the belly to belly suplex of Travis Killings. Alex Orion needs to get out quick before he gets his team disqualified. But now Kenshi Takayashi sensing his partner was in danger. Made the tag. But there's an net security to AJ Young. Now Takayashi, what's he going for here? He's going for it. That pump handle knee. And wait, down to Ryan with another belly to belly suplex. There's no pin going on. I don't see why Alex Ryan is interfering. And now he's hoisting Takayashi up and down with an Alabama slam. And Alex Orion getting rid of Travis Killings. Who sees AJ on to take advantage. And there's a Black Friday. Black Friday to Takayashi. And Takayashi has no other choice but to submit. Thanks to Alex Orion's timely intervention, AJ Young has won this match for his team. And with just one episode of Attitude left to go, before Carl All-Stars, AJ Young and Alex Orion just did wonders for their momentum. And now Travis Kelly's running the winners out of the ring. Travis Kelly's obviously upset about the way this match ended. Oh, hold on, ladies and gentlemen. Wait, Kobe Vincent. Travis Killings, you don't want to turn around because here comes the problem. AJ Young told Kobe Vincent earlier tonight he needs to know what side he's on. And I think we're getting our answer right here 
Travis Kelly is in trouble. Pop up power bomb. This does not look good for the champ as he is slowly making his way back to his feet. And there's a Vincent kick. But the problem does not look like he's done. And now sending Travis Kelly into the ropes. And oh my god, oh my goodness. No. He has him up. Problem solver. Kobe Vincent has destroyed the DCW champion right before our very eyes and proving that he's on AJ Young's side. AJ Young got the answer he wanted from Kobe Vincent. And oh, oh wait, here comes Kenji Takayashi. And this is Eric Takayashi. Takayashi showing he's not afraid of the problem. One of the men he's going to be facing at Call All Stars. The problem caught completely off guard. And look at the repeated kicks to the torso of Kobe Vincent. And Takayashi with the boot to the face. Oh no. Takayashi may just have angered the problem. He has it by the throat. Joke slam. Joke slam to Kenshin Takayashi. And Kobe Vincent is angry. Vincent kick. Vincent kick to Kenshin Takayashi. And thanks for coming. Kobe Vincent is indestructible here tonight. And AJ Young could not be any happier now that he has the monster back on his side. And AJ Young and Alex Orion are celebrating. Kobe Vincent just took out two of their biggest threats. And neither man could be any happier. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Kobe Vincent just kicked AJ Young's partner into oblivion. And AJ Young getting out of dodge. I don't know what Kobe Vincent's motive is, but I think it's just to destroy anything that moves. Problem solver. AJ Young looks confused and petrified. We thought that Kobe Vincent just proved his loyalty to AJ Young, but now we're left with more questions than answers. And Kobe Vincent doesn't look like he's done with Alex Orion, but now AJ Young getting in the face of the problem, wondering what the hell he's doing. And Kobe Vincent walking away from AJ Young, and AJ Young looks furious. Kobe Vincent may have just shown that he's a lone wolf with the Legion to nobody, bent on carnage and destruction. But ladies and gentlemen, I am Antoine Princeton and I am signing out.